I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we began to, I, I began to show you something yesterday that I'm going to continue today. But before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? I told you yesterday, this is the last week of the month of September. And listen, you've got to believe God for every good thing that he has in store for you. And so when we make demand for our daily bread, release your faith. And God is big enough to meet you wherever you need. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Turn your Bibles with me again uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go into and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. You know, whenever I read this, I just like, hold on. They didn't wander in the wilderness. They, they weren't in the wilderness looking at some wilderness experience. Wondering, ah, um, where are we now? How did we get ourselves? They didn't enter the wilderness because they sinned. They were led into the wilderness. You know, it's amazing how the kind of Christianity that some people have received is not doing them good. I began to share something. I think I shared something last week or two weeks ago. That... Life itself, the way life is organized, it has its ups and downs. Now that is the, when you begin to move in life, those are things you will face. It doesn't mean that your life will be up and down. There is a consistency that should be in your life. And what is that consistency? That you are led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Simply put, those who are not led by the Spirit of God, they are not the sons of God. There, is, there are no two ways about it. You see, that's the truth. If those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, don't start looking out for people who are led by the Spirit. Ask yourself, am I led by the Spirit? Because you need to know if you're a son of God or not. God leads his children. God leads his children. We'll get to that in a moment. But understand that he led them in this wilderness for 40 years. They never missed their way. For these 40 years, they were led. Where? In the wilderness. <laughs> Praise God. Now why? It says to humble you and test you. 40 years training, man, <laughs> praise God, to humble you and test you. Now, sometimes think about it, that if God tested them for 40 years, think about what plan, why, you know, imagine a, a manufacturer who's manufactured a, produ a, a product, and he's testing this product one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Think about the kind of perfection he's looking for, for that, from that product. Think about it. That he will test and test, it will fail once. He say, no, 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 we can't let it out like this. Hold on, let's, let's test it again. Remove this, replace this, test again. And that's what God was doing to the children of Israel for 40 years. Oh, no, 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 these guys, they don't believe me yet. Let's test them again. Let's test them again. All the miracles that God was doing in their life was a test. Think about it. 
He was feeding them with manna for 40 years. Every morning and evening, they would receive manna. 40 years, yet God was testing them. They drank water from the rock. God was testing them. They ate meat when they demanded. God was testing them. What was he testing them for? You, you should learn from this. It says to test you to know what was in your heart. God wants to know. You know, it's amazing. Is it not him that created it? How come he doesn't know what is in our heart? No. You see, this is, this is where people don't understand. Now, you know, I always say this. The knowledge of God is the most important knowledge anyone can ever have. Actually, Jeremiah, God himself said that uh, let him that uh, let him that rejoices, or let him that glories, glory in this, that he knows and understands me. So God himself knows that the knowledge of God is the most important thing. So much so that the first commandment is this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You know what that means? Give everything for the knowledge of God. Every strength in you, use it to know God. Every, everything, everything is geared towards the knowledge of God. <laughs> he said, that's the first commandment. Love him with all your heart. Now, how do you love him? It's to know him. It's to know him. No one feels loved like coming in contact with somebody who understands him. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Try this with anyone. You know, someone is speaking of you and you hear the person say like, ah, I know him. If you do like this, this is the result you're going to get. And you go, huh? Who's this fellow that knows me like this? Because I'm telling you the truth, or, or, automatically you feel loved. Of course, when they're telling the truth, you feel you're like, now, what gets you is like, this person has carefully studied me. Are you getting? Now, that's exactly how God feels when we act out our knowledge of him. See that? So, God now was testing these children of Israel to know what was in their heart. He wanted it to manifest so in bringing out the manifestation of what was in their heart, he had to put them through several tests. The same thing happens with you. You, you, I, you know, I always say this to, to young ladies. You want to get married to a man, you must put that man through two most important tests. You must put that man through patient, test of patience, and then anger. Now, both of them kind of go together in, in some way, not not in perfectly all the time, but, but somehow, see. So, what will this person do when he gets really angry? How far can he go? You need to test that. No matter what it takes for you to test that, asking God to help you so that God himself will create situations that will pro pro produce such a thing. It will help you. And then secondly, patient test. How long can this man wait? Now, of course, same thing. Now, why is it important? You know, sometimes I say, hey, why telling the man? What about the woman? Now, nah, hold on, hold on. Because, you see, for a lady, you're going to be submitting to this man. I know these days a lot of people are saying all kinds of funny things. How can I submit to him? How can I? <laughs> you err eh, because you don't know the scriptures. You don't know the power of God. That's another day's talk. But, but before you tell yourself that, look, this is, that's if your heart is genuine, of course. If your heart is not genuine, then you know what you're looking for. So you pursue what you're looking for. Now, if your heart is genuine, like, look, I'm going to do this thing right. I'm going to, I'm going to have the right kind of marriage. I'm going to, you must do anger test and you must do patient test for patience. Now, how do you do those tests? It's not by asking questions. What will you do if you're very, very angry? You can't get any answer. You can't get any good answer from that. You wait. 
until situations put you in that kind of situation or uh, um, place. And then you watch. That's where prayer comes in. Now, prayer is sweet when you're praying with understanding. Father, what will this man do when he's very, very upset and angry? What will he do? You've, you've prayed. Allow God to guide you. You would see it. You would see it. And when you see it, it's for a reason. Now, that's not what we're talking about. But understand, God had to put the children of Israel, the same thing he does with you today. He had to put the children of Israel through situations to know what was in their hearts. He wouldn't just take a microscope and look and say, I can see, I can see anger in this. I can see, no. No. Because he's not going to judge you based on that. God will not judge you based on what, you know, just like, mm, I know you, you're going to commit evil tomorrow. So I'll judge you for that. No. He would wait for you to manifest. And it's the manifestation that he uses to judge you. Praise God. Now, God tested them for 40 years to know what was in their heart. Whether they will keep his commandments or not. Now, look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Now, take note of this. Everything God did was for this one purpose, to make, the, to understand and to make them know that man does not live by bread alone. Bread alone means food alone. Man does not live by eating food alone. The only this, this, the source of life, the source of um, the, the the source of life to your body is not just bread. It's not just food. There is something else that God planned, and this is God's plan from the beginning. And what is that? That you live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Take note of the word proceeds. That is present continuous, not proceeded. Present continuous. You, your sustenance comes by the words coming out of the mouth of God. That is how God had designed man to live. That is how God have planned there's a lot of things in my spirit that I want to share with you, but I've got to, I've got to be careful how I communicate them so that um, it will come out properly in your mind. So now this is the plan of God from the beginning. You remember in Genesis when God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. See now, that statement in itself is very deep. So, man is now going to be in God's image and likeness. What does that mean? It means man, thank you Holy Spirit. What God planned is that man will be a spirit being like him. That's the image of God. God is a spirit. His spirit. See? Now, of course, after you've heard me say this before, that Adam was not made a spirit being. Adam was made a living soul. So when God carved him out of the dust of the ground, he breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. But the intention of God is to make man a spirit being. But then why didn't he make man a spirit being? Now, that's because he wanted to raise man are you getting me? He wanted to raise man to get to that point when man would now become a spirit being. Man becoming a spirit being is simply uh, now becoming fully a part of God. Please take note of that. So Adam was not made in the image and likeness of God. 
But God began to sustain him and sustain him. And how was God sustaining him? God was sustaining him by words. I told you yesterday, the voice of God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now that was meal time. Praise God. That was time when life was injected into man. You know the truth. The the I'm going to tell you this. You remember we talk, we spoke about how um, a lot of us have thought. Now that's because we thought that's what the Bible was teaching or what the Bible taught. That God said man will live only 120 years. I've, I've shown you that. That God never said that. What God meant was in 120 years, I would destroy everything I have created. That's what he meant. He never said, um, I'm putting a peg on the existence of man. 120, if you live 120, then you fulfill the number of your age. So you, you even find good preachers, you know, saying that, look, I'm going to live up to 120. I'm going to live up to 120. Now they hardly get beyond 120. Now that's because this is the mentality that that scripture in Genesis chapter six have created in our minds now because somebody preached it and we just now that's what happens you know someone preached something someone we love someone we respect preaches something we don't check it out we just like whoa aha now we are supposed to check out everything we hear from the holy spirit he is our teacher the holy spirit is our teacher we need to take everything we hear from any man no matter how we love him, no matter how we believe him, we need to take that thing to the true teacher. Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. So when he takes, when we take the things we have heard to him, now this is the reason it's so important. So, For example, I can be, I can be taught of the Lord, but you see, in that particular teaching, the Lord may say something in passing. Now, because the Lord said it in passing, um, there's a particular direction he is leading me at. It is so easy for me to take that thing he said in passing and focus it in the same direction we were going. See? And then I feel, okay, this is what this means. Are you getting me? Now, I preach it and everyone's like, oh, wow. But that may not be what the Holy Spirit mean, means by when he said that word in passing. You need to go to him and say, you know, sometimes you stop him and say, Lord, hold on. You just said this. What, what does this mean? I've told you before. Sometimes it's not just, oh, what does this mean? There are times you need to fast and pray. Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days because he read the prophecy of, of Jeremiah. He fasted for 21. Lord, what exactly did you mean by these 70 years that you told Jeremiah? That was all Daniel was asking the Lord for 21 days. Think about it. When last did you fast and pray because you wanted to understand a verse of scripture? Ah, do we need to? Don't we have brains? And you have not started. No, you have not started. Praise God. Truly, this is one of the things that we must do to begin to manifest eternal life. Because I'll tell you the truth. The fact that Jeremiah said it doesn't mean it has life today. For it to have life today, I must take what Jeremiah has said and take it before the Lord and let the Lord say it to me also. When the Lord says it to me, it will produce life in me. Praise God. So take this today. It is the words proceeding from the mouth of God to you that produces life in you. I'll say it again. It is the word of God proceeding from his mouth to you that produces life in you. Praise God. Our time is up for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Father, I bless you. Let today bring forth the anointing and grace for perfection in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.